boys come and go. But we as women think that friendship should be forever. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. A lot of the questions I've been getting from you guys lately are about bad friends, especially if you're kind of like 13, 14, 15, and either you or a friend is maybe moving into a different social scene and like a different social direction than the other one is. I went through this myself. When I got to high school, I was like, I want to be popular. I was like dorky in my middle school, but like everyone was dorky, so it wasn't really that weird. And I realized I had to make a conscious decision to take my socializations and my social life in a different direction if I wanted to be popular. And I did. And I told this to my friends at the time, and some of them were like, cool, do you. And other ones were like, that's stupid and you shouldn't. You should just selling out. At no time did I say I wanted to ditch my old friends. I just wanted to make new ones. I wanted to get involved in things I hadn't tried. I wanted to date different people. I wanted to branch out. And that's the thing with life. There's going to be some people in your life who are inelastic. They don't want you to change. They don't want the situation to change. No, 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 no. Everything has to stay this way forever. Those to me are not real friends because friendship is about growing. Life is about growing and changing and learning and adapting and modifying. Your true friends, and ironically, I'm still friends with these friends who like were okay with me changing and growing. A true friend is going to say, you know what? The connection we have is strong. So I'm not going to stress about it. You do you and do whatever. If you happen to be on the other end of that, that you're noticing a friend who just wants to sit with the popular girls and now she's ostracizing you, it's a little bit of a different situation. It's one thing if you had an incredible friend like me who still wanted to be friends with you but also needed to pursue this other opportunity. But it's another if you find yourself being left out, criticized, maybe a little bit bullied, kind of mean girled, that's not good. That person who's doing it to you is not a friend. And of course, she's she'll probably call you when she's broken hearted or, you know, the shit hits the fan and she's really upset. But in terms of being there on a day-to-day -day basis and not being embarrassed of you and like being proud that you're her friend and being okay with you being maybe a little less cool, if that's not her if that's not her thing, if that's not what she's giving to you, she's not your friend. So here's how to break up with a friend who really has turned into an enemy. Because this is what I end up saying to a lot of you guys is like, you say my friend did this and she went out with my crush and she told people some secret about me and then she's making fun of me. I'm like, she's not your friend. If you didn't have that history of friendship and you just looked at those facts on paper, what would you call this person? That's an enemy. Think about Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. Taylor Swift said that she would sometimes walk away from interactions with Katy Perry and be like, is this person my friend or did she hand me the harshest burn of my life? And if that's the feeling you get from your friend, that you don't even know what side of the fence you're on, that's not good because it means you're on the wrong side. So with boys, you have to have like a confrontation and a breakup, at least a text, an email, a phone call, a something. With girlfriends, not so much because this usually backfires and it sort of puts you, uh, puts things into perspective. You're like, wow, if I was a boy and I had to break up with a girl, this would be a fucking nightmare because girls are crazy and girls don't want to hear it. That's true. So you, I mean, if you want, before you break up with a friend, sit down with them and be like, I feel like we're kind of not on the same page or like things have been really tense. And like, I am fine with you like going and having other friends, but like, I don't really feel like you need to be mean to me then. Like, I don't know why you're doing that. And it's really hurtful because I feel like I've been a good friend to you and I feel like I'm giving you the space to go explore and do whatever. And if you have to throw me under the bus to do that, then you're not my friend. A real friend will listen to that and be like, oh, damn, I am so sorry. I didn't even realize that it got that bad, that I was doing this. A bad friend is going to be defensive. A bad friend is going to ramp up her shitty behavior. And that's when you know it's time to cut it loose. But I think give people the benefit of the doubt. Talk it out if the friendship is worth saving and see what the other person has to say. Meet in the middle and get some clarity. If not for them, if not to save the friendship, so that you can look back and think, I did everything I could to save this friendship. Absolutely everything. If you can't, don't sit down and be like, we are breaking up. You are not my friend anymore. I'm going to say mean things about you. I'm going to glow you in the hall because you're a fucking bitch. Don't do that. Quietly untangle yourself. Be busy. Be really busy. Life is busy. You're busy. She's busy. Everyone's busy. You can't answer the phone all the time. You can't hang out. Oh, you got a CT prep class. You've got flute lesson. You got to make it up. Make it up. It'll save you a lot of stress. It'll save her ego. Then, privately, write a letter. Write a letter to her and get all those feelings out. 
do not send this letter. Do not ever. Do not ever send this letter. Burn the letter. Burn the letter when you're done because, no. This is for you to emotionally get out the things that you need to get out. And once that's done, you'll have a little bit of closure. Because the thing I've learned, I say this all the time, closure is not something other people can give us. It's something we have to give ourselves. If a shitty boyfriend could give us closure, if he was communicative enough to give us closure, he probably wouldn't be a shitty boyfriend. Do you know what I mean? If your bitch friend was able to sit down and be like, look, I'm being mean to you because I really want to impress this other group. If she could do that, she wouldn't be such a bitch. These people can't do it. You can't get blood from a turnip, as my grandmother said. So don't try. Get your own blood from your own turnip. That metaphor fell apart, but you see where I'm going with this. If you have more questions about this, leave questions here in the comment section. It's very easy for me to respond that way. But if you overall look at your friendships and you say, do I trust this person? If your friend has done something to undermine trust, there's not a lot of ways to come back from that. And a lot of you guys email me and be like, should I forgive her? Should I give her another chance? And you never stop to ask yourself, is she even apologizing? Has she asked for another chance? Has she acknowledged her mistakes, made a plan of why it's not gonna happen again, and is she the one pulling you into the new era? No. A lot of times we think we're supposed to automatically forgive people who aren't sorry, and that's bullshit. You don't need to forgive anyone for that, and certainly don't give them another chance, because there's nothing that's going to indicate that, that, that it's gonna change. The best indication of future behavior, unfortunately, is past behavior.